Okay, I think that the exam is graded, so let me cast this back. I'm not going to go over them. If you have questions, please come and see me. I mean, for the most part, I think everyone did pretty well. Um, it looked like several people ran out of time. And it looked like at least uh, part of the reason people ran out of time is not knowing how to work with complex numbers under calculator. So um, I assume that's something that you should have learned in circuits too. So if you don't know how to do that, you know, get help with that. You know, we've got the uh, tutors in the various classes that, that would help you with that. But that is an issue that it makes your life so much easier if you know how to use your calculator to do complex numbers. Um, and that's, that was really kind of a requirement to do the, the last problem. Um, being able to work with complex numbers. But by and large, I was pretty pleased with the way everyone did, especially as, as much as everyone was complaining after the test. I was really concerned that people were not going to do that well. So you, you lowered my expectations enough that I was pleasantly pleased when I actually graded the graded the exam. So um, okay, so and this is this is now laying some groundwork for our study now of electrical magnetic fields. And depending on the problem, uh, the, the geometry of the problem, you know, with, with whatever shape you're working with, by choosing the right coordinate system, the problem can be greatly simplified. Either the, the problem description, or if you're having to carry out some sort of integration, doing it in cylindrical versus Cartesian coordinates, you know, can make your life a lot uh, simpler. So cylindrical coordinates are appropriate anytime you're dealing with some sort of object that looks like a cylinder, like a can. Right? So I'm going to first draw our cylindrical coordinate vectors. Uh, with respect to our Cartesian coordinate vectors. And a, a point in a cylindrical space is defined by, uh, ultimately, it's, it's height along the, the z-axis. That's actually the third coordinate, just like an xyz space. But how it's different, so let me draw a projection. into the xy plane. Okay. And cylindrical coordinates to get to a point, I tell you to walk 10 meters at some angle relative to the x-axis. And this is fine. Now notice I've, I've kind of rotated my coordinate axis. In the past I've had x going to the right, y, right and y going into the board, but I've just rotated it slightly to, to draw this picture a little better. But I tell you to walk 10 meters at 30 degrees relative to you know, x is due east, relative to due, e, uh, to due east, and then go eight meters up. So this coordinate is called rho, 10 meters. 
the angle here relative to the x-axis, our reference axis, is, is phi. And then we go up, I guess, let me try and draw it. The point would actually be like that. So this, this is our point in uh, cylindrical coordinates. And so the, the point would have, well, the corresponding vectors, the row hat unit vector is in the direction that I, that I walk toward the point. This is in the same row hat vector here that I walk from the origin to that to the projection at that point in the x y point. Uh, the z hat that's the easy that's the next easy one is the same z hat coordinate that we've been walk uh, uh, using in the past with Cartesian coordinates. And then there's the phi unit vector. That is 90 degrees to those two. It's 90 degrees to rho. So again, it would be you know, rho down here. This is also rho. And phi is this 90 degree vector perpendicular to that. Perpendicular to the rho vector. Is that, can you visualize that, Tyler? You're looking confused? Okay. It's okay. Um, so one of the things about the, the unit vectors in cylindrical space, and, and we'll see this in spherical space, is that depending on the position of the point, the unit vectors, rho and phi, actually change direction, right? If the point is right, lying right above the x-axis, rho lies in the same direction as x hat. But as the point swings around, rho is constantly pointing in a different direction. And the same would be true for my phi hat unit vector. Z is always in the same direction, always pointing straight up. So in Cartesian, Cartesian unit vectors, they're always fixed in space. Cylindrical unit vectors change depending on uh, the position of the point in space. Um, it is true because they are unit vectors, and again, this is true for, for any unit vector. That the dot products are equal to one. And then similarly, you can determine this by the right hand rule. You know, index finger in the direction of row hat, middle finger in the direction of, of, of p hat, my thumb's in the direction of z. So uh, row hat cross p hat is z hat. And then similarly, uh, phi hat cross z hat is row hat. One more rotation. Uh, Z hat cross where am I at? Z row. So here I'm going to give you a little mnemonic device. Z cross row is equal to phi. So this is the unit vector. Row cross phi is equal to Z. B cross Z is, is rho, Z cross rho is, is phi hat. You go in the opposite direction, you get the negative. And then, of course, rho cross rho is zero because they're pointing in the same direction. So that's, that's a little mnemonic device. Position vectors are a little strange in cylindrical coordinates. So the position vector to say point one, again, is rho one, rho hat plus z one, z hat. That's how I would get to, to this point. I, 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 I walk rho one units in the, in the rho hat direction and then go z one units up. The problem with that is, and that's correct, the problem with it, that is, that doesn't isolate the, the point in space unless I also know the angle. Okay. The angle is kind of implicitly part of the row vector, right? It's always 90 degrees to that angle. So although it's not part of the vector, you typically have to also give the angle to uniquely identify, to identify the point. Um, the 
You can't add or subtract two position vectors in cylindrical coordinates. The problem is if you have two position vectors to two different points, the row and uh, phi vectors are pointing in different directions, right? Depends on the point. So you can't directly add the coordinates. So you actually need to convert from cylindrical coordinates to Cartesian coordinates, which are always fixed in space, and then do your addition and subtraction, and then convert back. So it seems like it's not something you typically want to do, but it is something that you have to do occasionally. So to convert from cylindrical to x, y, and z, and you can get this geometrically, you know, the x distance here out to that point is this diagonal is rho, this is 90 degrees, and that angle is phi, so that distance is just rho cosine phi. So x is rho cosine phi, y similarly is rho sine phi, and then z is just z. That's the easy one, right? And then from geometry, you can work out going backwards, going back in the other direction. Uh, rho is the square root of x squared plus y squared. Uh, B is the arc tangent of y over x, and c is equal to z. Now, what's this funny arc tangent here? Well, phi can actually be anywhere between zero and two pi, or between minus pi and pi. But the arc tangent on your calculator uh, just gives you a result uh, that's between, uh, typically between plus or minus 90 degrees. The issue is in the first, first quadrant, where x and y are both positive, the arc tangent, which is an arc tangent of y over x, is exactly the same as in, when you're in the third quadrant, and y and x are both negative, right? That ratio is still positive. So arc tangent, you have to adjust it by pi radians or 180 degrees, depending on what quadrant you're in. And you have to look at both the signs of both y and x to do that. So, uh, um, software like MATLAB or Octave have this um, arc tangent two function built in that uniquely identifies the angle anywhere between zero and 360 degrees or zero and two pi. But most calculators only have an arc tangent function, which only um, identifies it within um, plus or minus 90 degrees, and then you have to add, add 180 uh, to shift it appropriately. Now, this, this, this will handle the coordinate conversions, the, the variables, are, but we also need the vector conversions. How do you convert a vector in one set of coordinates? So let's say we have A bar, which is A row, and row plus A feet. Times B hat plus B C times C hat. And we want to convert that to now these A row, A phi, they, they may be functions of row phi and z as well. And AX, X hat plus AY, Y hat plus AZ. Z hat. We have to convert the coordinates, but we also have to convert the vectors to the appropriate space. So the way you get x hat here is you just calculate a bar dotted with x hat. Because if we do that, y dot x is 0, z dot x is 0, but x dot x is 1. And so a bar x A bar x hat is just our component there that we need ax. And similarly, you know, ay 
is a bar y hat and a z is a bar z hat. Now you have to do this dot product with a and the original cylindrical coordinates. So the next thing we need are, and we carry this out, we need rho dot x, we need b dot x, and we need z dot x to figure out what those are. z dot x is zero. They're, they're actually still at 90 degrees. So we need the dot products. of the unit vectors. You can get these with some careful graphs and the use of geometry. So here's our x hat and y hat vectors. Our row hat vector would be at this angle at an angle phi relative to the x hat, x hat vector. What we want is x dot rho hat, for example. We need all of these products. x dot rho hat, x dot v hat, x dot z hat. But x dot rho hat, by definition, is the magnitude of the unit vector, the product of the unit vectors, times the cosine of the angle between them, Well, they're unit vectors, so they have a magnitude of one. So that dot product is just the cosine of this angle we call P. And then similarly, y hat dot rho, that's the cosine of 90 minus P, which is sine of P, is, is sine of P. So I'm not going to go through the derivation of all of these. Others are, they're given in a table, 4.1 on page 78. It's a short table, so I'll, I'll draw it here. Or I'll list the elements. So this is the dot product. And remember, dot products are commutative, so x dot rho is the same as rho dot x. Okay. So you use this table not only to convert from cylindrical to Cartesian, but from Cartesian to cylindrical also. And the elements here are cosine phi, sine phi, which we got from the table above, uh, zero, um, z is the same. And then here, this is minus sine p, cosine p, zero, 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 one. I'd encourage you to try and see where each of the elements in that table come from by drawing a little picture like that, and then getting the various dot products from, from the definition. But, but let's look at an example. Convert a bar equal rho rho hat plus z b hat to Cartesian coordinates. So the components here are, in this case, functions of rho, z, and phi. We could have something like rho cosine phi here. You have to be more involved in this. But I want to I want to compute the x coordinate of the corresponding Cartesian vector. So I do that by dotting a bar with x. And so I'll have rho rho hat dot x plus z p hat dot x which is looking at my table rho hat dot x is cosine phi and 
z sine v. And I need to rewrite this though in terms of x, y, and z. I'm trying to convert away from the cylindrical coordinates into the rectangular coordinates. And so here's where my coordinate conversions come in. I see rho, rho cosine phi is x. Sine phi is y over rho. So this, I'll do it two steps. Sine phi is y over rho. Still not done, I've got rho here I need to convert. But this is x minus zy then over the square root of x squared plus y squared, which is not a nasty looking expression, but that, that's what it is. Similarly, I need the, the y component. It's a bar dot uh, y, a bar dot y hat. That's going to be rho, rho hat dot y hat plus z, z hat dot y hat. And if you go through the same steps, you'll get y plus zx over square root of x squared plus y squared. And then finally, the az component, a bar dot z hat. Well, remember z is in both coordinate systems. It's perpendicular to the other unit vectors in both coordinate systems. So rho hat dot z is zero, p hat dot z is zero, so the z component is zero. And then now what we have, finally, is I put the pieces together. That's the ax component, x minus zy over the square root of x squared plus y squared. And then this is x hat component. And then I have y plus zx, x squared plus y squared. <clears throat> y hat as the final result. So, and I think he's got another example in the book. So look through that. I'll give you some homework on these coordinate conversions, uh, vector conversions between cylindrical and Cartesian, Cartesian to cylindrical. And yet you have to know the conversions pretty well. I mean, you may say, oh, well, that looks familiar if you're gonna convert back. That square root is rho. Z, you don't have to change. And you know, Y and X are both rho cosine phi and uh, rho sine phi for, for x and y to actually do the conversion back. That's the coordinate conversion. You still have to compute, uh, compute the, the unit vectors. For example, to get the a rho com component, we would take the dot product of this now with rho hat. So we'd have x hat dot rho hat and y hat dot rho hat, which we get from this table. Integration over length. I mentioned that integration over a contour over a over a contour actually will give us voltage if we're integrating over the electric field. In physics, the application is you know, integrate a, a force over a, a distance contour. You get you get energy. But we'll be doing uh, we'll be finding voltage. But, you know, if, if the contour is a cylindrical contour, you know, a circle or part of a circle, or, you know, a, a radius out, and then perhaps along a part of the circle or something like that, it, you're going to do want to do the integration in cylindrical coordinates. Now, what you have to be careful of, D rho is actually a distance. 
D phi is not, that's a change in angle. Right? So if you look at the, a corresponding change in angle here of a, a small D phi and then ask what that distance is, it's that change in angle times rho, right? This distance due to a small D phi is with phi in radians, that distance is rho times that change in angle. So the, the distance element here is actually rho d phi for the z, z co coordinate. That is a that is a distance, and so the corresponding distance is just d z. So a common mistake is to leave out the rho there when, you, when you're integrating over length. Um, integrating over era, area. And we're again, covering the basics, we'll be doing some of this later on. We'll typically do this to calculate the flux of a vector field or the amount of flow of a vector field through a particular surface. So again, our, our general notation for An elemental area, we treat that as a vector. We'll be computing the, the dot product of the vector field and the elemental surface area. Now, <clears throat> when you're working with cylindrical coordinates, you're, you're typically calculating this, this, doing this integration over a portion of the cylinder. And in that case, ds takes on one of these other forms. It's rho hat, rho d phi dz. When you're doing this, this integration over a constant rho surface or a cylinder. So what I mean by that is, to draw these pictures, but this is the xy plane. And here we've got some cylinder setting above the xy plane. And we want to do this integration over the sides of the cylinder, not the top and bottom, but over the sides of the cylinder where rho is fixed, you know, it's, it's two meters out to the edge of this can. Okay, it's a 10 can setting on the xy plane. And we want to integrate over the area of the side of this thing. Well, this height is dz, right? the vertical height. Again, this other length due to a change in angle is not d phi, but actually rho d phi. So that elemental surface area is actually rho d phi dz. And it's the unit vector, which is normal to the surface, is always in, going to be in the rho direction, pointing from the origin out through the side of the can. And that's in the rho half direction. We've got two other areas rho dz. This is with a constant constant p surface. And this would generate actually a, a rectangle. <clears throat> so the picture here in the xy plane what this looks like with a, with a constant phi at this constant angle. And then I'm integrating over rho. So I'm allowing rho to vary. And I'm also allowing z to vary. So, but, but the angle here is constant. Okay. Well, that's just a rectangle in that case. And then the, so, um, in this case, it's part of a, a solid cylinder, a 
I was talking about it as a 10 can before, but really we think of it as the edge of a solid cylinder. This would be a plane that's making up the interior. And then the uh, final surface. So I could use this actually, you know, if I'm dealing with, uh, uh, you know, part of a part of a cylinder, for example. And I want to get the total surface area. I'd have to get the area of the side, which you use here, and I'd integrate over a certain z and a certain range of angles. And then for the area of the sides, I can carry out this, this integral over rho and z. The final piece I need is the top and bottom, making up that get to get the total area of that cylindrical wedge. And then that area is in the z direction. It's made up of a row component. Okay, this is the row. And again, this arc here is, is still rho d phi. So that unit vector is in z. And it's uh, d rho. Well, it's rho d rho d phi. So, this is a constant Z surface or portion of a circle on the, on the top and bottom. We'll talk more about this unit vector direction here later on. Here I say it's in the positive Z. You could just as easily say it's in the negative z direction. Our convention will be if we've got a surface, we'll, we'll choose that unit vector so it's always pointing out from the enclosed volume of, of that surface. So an example here, find A dot ds, where A is equal to rho hat. It's, it has a magnitude of one, okay, but it's just a constant unit vector. So, you know, if I drew that in the xy plane, what that would, that would look like, you know, it's just these constant vectors going out distance rho everywhere, so covering the entire plane. It's always directed radial, and z would actually be coming out of the board. So that would be what that vector field would look like. And then, and s is cylinder of Radius two of height four sitting on XY plane. Uh, actually, it's the sides of the side of the cylinder. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna I'm not going to compute this over the uh, top and bottom. Actually, the integral over the top and bottom of a dot ds would be zero because the, the uh, ds element is in the z direction and a is in the row direction. So that dot product would actually be zero. zero. So these, these types of problems are typically accompanied by a figure. These things are not easy for me to draw. I'll do my best. So what we're being asked to, to do here and it's supposed to be a, a cylinder sitting on the XY plane and with a height of four and then the radius is two, so it'd be two along the x-axis and two along the y-axis. But the 
distance out to the edge of the cylinder is, is two. So the integrals is fairly straightforward. Uh, <clears throat> this is my cylinder, so I want to use the first elemental area. Integral of S A dot B S is I've got rho dotted with rho, so that's the integral over to S of rho B phi B Z. Now I have to find out what are what what are the range of phi and z in this particular problem. Notice on the sides of the cylinder, rho is constant everywhere, it's equal to two. Now, if I were integrating over the top and bottom or along these over these rectangles that make up the interior, rho is changing. But over this surface, rho is two. Right? It's got a radius of two. My angle is going from zero to two pi. All the way around the cylinder and the height of the cylinder goes from zero to four. So this is actually going to be two pi times four, eight pi times two. So as a result, I get 16 pi. In this case, because A has unit magnitude, that would actually be the same as the surface area of the sides of the cylinder. If A were two, it would be twice the surface area. If A is some function, it wouldn't be related to the surface area. Integration over volume. Elemental volume um, cube is rho d rho d phi d z. And rho d, rho d phi there is the length. And then d rho and d z are both already length elements. So let me quickly give you kind of a, a rundown for spherical coordinates. So we, the other common geometry we'll work with in this course is um, geometry of, of spheres. And so there are certain problems where it's more convenient, for example, to use uh, spherical coordinates. So if we're asked to find, um, for example, the, the total charge, given the charge density, the total charge in a, in a sphere of charge, you want to use spherical coordinates to carry out that integration. If you have the charge density, the total charge is the density times the elemental volume and we'd integrate over the entire sphere. So, <clears throat> um, spherical coordinates. And I'll try to recreate that picture I had last time. X, Y, Z. Now in spherical coordinates, There's actually just one vector in the in the unit vector up here. So we we march a distance, call it R, out to a point. That corresponding unit vector is R hat. Now I have to tell you which direction to march. Again, it's given by two angles, the same angle um, P that we've been working with in cylindrical coordinates, measured from the x-axis. And so that unit vector in that direction, 
that's perpendicular to R is C that B is actually is parallel to the XY plane. And then the other angle we need is theta that's measured from the vertical. And that corresponding unit vector is perpendicular to my R and phi vectors. So here in spherical coordinates, as my point changes in space, all three of these unit vectors change direction. And unlike the Cartesian coordinates, which are always fixed. The other thing is you have to be aware of theta only goes from zero to pi, not to zero to two pi, because if we allow it to go from all the way from zero to two pi back around again, and then phi also goes from zero to two pi, we actually sweep out the sphere twice. So yeah, we, we have actually relative to z, you can think about this as this is as theta goes from zero to pi. And then now we allow the angle phi to go from zero to two pi sweeps all the way around. It's gonna, it's gonna create our sphere for us. And so phi goes from zero to two pi. So watch out for that when you're doing some of these integrals that you, theta will never be greater than pi. If we're doing a hemisphere, theta might just go from zero to pi over two. For a cone, you know, zero off to some angle. And we also have, and they're, they're unit vectors. This is true for all unit vectors. The dot product is one. The cross product. Just remember you know, the standard order of these things is R theta P hat here now. And then so R cross theta hat is, is phi hat and so on and so forth for the, for the, uh, for the cross products. The position vector is quite simply just R1 in the direction of R, right? That's all you need, but you have to know the direction of R. You have to know R hat, but this is the position vector. It's the simplest possible position vector. I go R1 units in the R hat direction. And that's, that doesn't give me all of the information. I actually have to know the R hat direction. And so you also need, the angle information to go along with that position vector. The coordinate conversions you can you can get from drawing some careful pictures. Um, X is R sine theta cosine p. So the, the distance, so R cosine theta is going to be the projection of this point onto the z-axis. R sine theta is the projection onto the x-y-axis. So this length is actually R sine theta. And then take the cosine of phi times that, and we're going to get the x distance. So y similarly is R sine theta sine phi and then z is r cosine theta and to go back so y z r theta z r is the square root of the sum of the squares x squared plus y squared plus z squared theta is the r cosine of z over r 
And then the angle is still this arc tangent. Oh, y over z. Now, again, arc cosine, you want to calculate as typically cosine of minus one. Sometimes it's called a cos or arc cos, but it's all the same function, right? It's the inverse cosine. Similarly, arc tangent is the inverse inverse tangent. And then vector conversions. Give you the, the table. This is table four two in your book. Page eighty two. So x hat, y hat, and z hat, and r hat, beta hat. and then sine theta, cosine phi, cosine theta, cosine phi, minus sine phi, so sine theta, sine phi, cosine theta, sine phi. Sine phi, cosine phi, cosine theta, sine theta, and zero. So I know that's a lot. The corresponding length element is R. Or dr in the r direction, and the theta d theta is not a length, but r d theta is the length. And then in the in the phi direction, that the length is actually r sine theta d phi. R sine theta again is the projection onto the x y plane, and it's that length times the angle that gives me the distance. So this is r sine theta d phi. Uh, area ds is equal r squared sine theta d phi d theta. This is a constant r for the surface of the sphere or ds is r sine theta d phi dr, this is constant theta, at a constant theta, if you vary r and phi, you sweep out a, a cone, so this would be the surface of a cone, and finally, for constant phi, r, d theta, dr, constant p with p constant here and you change uh, hold r constant change state you get uh, a circle um, the, the perimeter of a circle if you vary r you get a, a solid circle and then finally volume dv is r squared sine theta d phi d theta dr okay, for the elemental volume. So um, that's it for today. Again, I'll give you some additional homework. I'll try it. Um, if you have questions on the exam, come and see me. And on, on the second page of the exam, I, I put a number there. If those of you have any courses in the past, know that I post grades so that you can use that number to actually look at your overall grade for the course. 
but I'm way behind on grading for all my classes, and it's going to take me a, a week or so to get the online grade books up so that you can see them. Um, but remember that number that's on your exam. I'll let you know when I get that up to date. Uh, just come and see me if you have questions. I'd be happy to work through it with you. Okay. Actually, I might, uh, I'll, I'll try to remember to do that. So, yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Uh -huh.